Got the green chairs. Yeah, it's a little greens and blues. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, definitely, definitely coordinated a little, a little vibe. So what's up, man? How y'all, how y'all feeling? What's up, Cray? What's going on? How you doing? Is, uh, you know what I'm saying? Good to, good to have you here, young Ace. <laughs> what's up, Marcus? Ace and, what's up, man? RG, was good, was good. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's really good to have y'all here. I think this is a really, really good and special opportunity to really have this, this conversation about. Christian hip hop, you know, faith, hip hop culture, however one would choose to um package that. Mm. It's a really it's a really good time. It's a really interesting, really interesting time in the in the space. A lot of new artists, you know, Cray, you've been going at it for a while now and it, you know, listening to some of your new music, man, it feel like you still you got that LeBron and the <laughs> man jumping from the free throw line, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? Like it's like oh. it's it's 1999, you know what I mean? That was like, an old man laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a where's he going. That's how RG's coming all day. <laughs> that, was a, that was a where is he going with that. But then, you know, at the same time, you know, we got cats like you, RG, just really taking things sonically and, you know, topic-wise places that it hasn't really gone. And so in between all of that, it's just a spectrum of there's this new guard, but then we still have... You know, hip hop is doing a really good job nowadays of of giving people their flowers and and people who've been who've been you know has some longevity are able to still participate. But for us, localizing the conversation a little bit, it's it does kind of feel I think y'all would agree like there's a it's something new, it's something mm -hmm. bubbling mm -hmm. right in, in Christian hip hop. So mm -hmm. we'd love to um, just jump right on in. Like, Craig, you look like you. Like I'm already jogging some 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 prompts in your mind. I see your wheels turning. I okay. I would just want to ask like, how how do you see things right now? What what do you what what comes top of mind for you when you think of of Christian, of hip, Christian hip, -hop. hip hop? What it is and what it ain't and where you going with it? That's funny because, um, like I, a lot of times, just people will ask me this question. Like you know where's Christian hip hop, what's going on? Or there's debates about it all the time on social media. And it's funny because I don't think people look at it like historically to to make sense of what's happening right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like literally you had regular hip hop doing this thing in the seventies and then in the eighties, the Christians started arising and trying to like use hip hop to speak about their faith. And it wasn't, I mean, no shade. Shout out to Stephen Wiley, Bible rap. <laughs> Yo, that was, yeah, Bible rap. I didn't know that, but Bible rap was, wasn't that like the first? Yeah. 85, Something or 82, like that. that was the first yeah. Christian. When did, uh, when did Tunnel Rats come So from? that that's like the 90s, you know what I'm saying? You like, weren't even born yet, bro. Yeah, that's like the late 90s, so you got like 85, which I didn't know about it. I had to go back and do my research, but it's like, they was all like, most of them, were like just trying to figure out how to put their faith into hip hop music because the the kids weren't, you know, they wanted to see kids come to know the Lord and have something. And then it, it started to get dope from my perspective. When you started, I'm just kidding. Nah, 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 but like it started to get dope cause, cause, cause East Coast hip hop was the thing, right? Like in the nineties and so, so so some East Coast Christian hip hop started to get prominent and dope, but the South wasn't represented. And then I felt like that was the reach era was kind of us like coming to represent the South. And then I think people never thought we would go as far as we went. And so now I feel like Christian hip hop was so busy. It was so busy looking at what reach did to where it was like, oh, we gotta do that. Now I feel like, it's like, will we just have our own identity? We're gonna do our own thing. And I think that's healthy, is when it's like, yo, who are we gonna be and where are we gonna go? Yeah, it kind of sounds like what you're saying is, and that's that's a little bit of an elephant in the room, I think, nowadays is the reach, what reach is, and then can, do you have to be at reach to, mm. to be Christian hip hop? Are you not? You know, which so it's really interesting. So when you say now people are asking like, "What am I doing?" Are you saying people are now just kind of saying there's space for other people to do this? Yeah, I think so. Cause uh, for a minute, 
a lot of times you got to remember, like, culture is all about status. So not necessarily, like, being the best or the biggest, but just, like, where more people are moving. And for a long time, Christians were rocking with Reach. Just that was like the one-stop shop. So I think people felt like they needed to either be with Reach or do what Reach was doing in order to be successful. And now I feel like people are just doing their own thing and it's working for them. You know what I mean? That yeah, that's one thousand. One thousand. I mean, you, I, you, you. yeah. I feel like this may this may sound like a a bit of a slight to the older generation because we all standing on the backs of people that paved the way before us, right? Mm. But I feel like the talent pool in Christian hip hop, Christians doing rap, is like out of it's out of this world now versus what it was when Ooh. I was coming up. It's 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 crazy fire, and you don't have to fit like the Reach Records template to have your own voice or to kind of branch out. Well, that's a that's really interesting, uh, especially for you to say that sitting next to RG, who, I mean, for for all intents and purposes, I think. You know, obviously we all work at the same label, but when you think about where things are now, you do sort of represent the turning of the guard, like the, you know. So I would be really curious to hear, RG, for, for the sake of this conversation, if it goes all the way back to the 80s mm -hmm. and then you brought up Tunnel Rats in the 90s, what what was it about, what, what made you look up and say, I want to do Christian hip hop? And I, and I like to kind of, Dig in with your story a little bit. Yeah. I think for me, just rap and music, hip hop just always resonated with me. And yeah, just finding like other artists. I remember the first Reach show I went to actually. It was the Don't Waste Your Life tour. I think we paid like $5 for the ticket, five, eight dollars for the ticket. It was crazy, like, bro. It was at the convention center and like, bro, the lights were falling off the oh, roof. Oh yeah, I like, remember that. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Bro, it was crazy. The wildest experience I ever had. Um, at that time, and it was like, it was just crazy seeing like Christians, like being unapologetically themselves mm -hmm. and making dope art. Like Trip came out in the biggest, biggest shirt I ever seen. <laughs> like Cray had like, this is the first time I seen a Christian with a tattoo. It was a, a one one six tattoo. Like, it was just this like mm. shift, I guess, for my for myself growing up in church. Like I had never seen something like that. Um, and I think for me, it's just kind of what Ace was saying, like standing on the backs of the people that came before us, like mm. y'all laid a foundation for us to like come in and just be free to do our thing. Cause I imagine when y'all coming up, like, bro, it was hella like roadblocks and people telling y'all like, y'all can't do this, you can't do that. You came in, bro, barriers to where like, shoot, I could talk about like immigration. I could talk about, um, my yeah. own struggle with depression and anxiety. Mm. Like, I could talk about that stuff because of mm. the lanes y'all paid. It's yeah, crazy. yeah. So kind of what I hear you saying, I think a lot of people were registered with this, was coming into it. You went to a Reach record show, and some people probably have had similar experiences where you come in and you see something that you didn't think could exist. You said, I felt like I could be myself. I'm curious now... Because for Lecrae, like you talked about trip, you know, baggy clothes and tattoos. That now it's a, it's like, you know, we all, everybody up here probably got tattoos. That on my neck. You know, except for mm -hmm. Ace. Uh, got uh, one, bro. Uh, you got an no, ankle tattoo? No, it's not an ankle tattoo. It's a 116 tattoo. Oh, you got a 116? Nah, just kidding. It's uh, like right in the middle of his back. Middle of the back. One. Yeah, right, right, right. But forward. now it's, a, it's like, um, oh. It's now. Now it's, what, can you hit the pause button? It's right. um the the what it means to be yourself or to push the agenda a little bit. It's not the same of of what that show you went to. So I'm I'm curious now, RG, when you think about nowadays, what what does it look like to for a for a Christian at your at your stage of life to be themselves? What does that look like? Yeah, I think just being authentic and being 100% um, who they are. And I, I, I know it sounds like general, but it's like, I think, especially in culture and like this generation, like people, are, people don't want to hear sermons. They don't want to hear preachings. They want to see like the word in action. Like they want to see like what it looks like to be um, 
young what it, and Christian, what it looks like to be flawed and Christian, what it looks like to be um, human and not have it all together. And I think that's kind of where I'm uh, most passionate about, just being um, transparent about my walk, transparent about my struggles, transparent about, like, kind of where I'm at in life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I think, yeah, that's what, on that end, on the fashion side, bro, I feel like the swag is up there, bro. Like, yeah, God. I mean, I mean it, look it's at very me. apparent. Look at not Clyde. Look, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you I know, mean, it's it's not, not, RG's not short it's of confidence. You, it's yeah, a, it's, freedom. Yeah, it's everybody. Yeah. Everybody stepping up their swag, bro. And I think it's a, uh, it's just cool to see, bro. Right? Which, cool. which in a lot of people, it's funny because we have these conversations a lot, and um, I think sometimes we can take for granted things like that where. where if you participate, if you're a participant, if you're an artist, maybe you understand the importance of swag or fashion, but maybe the average person viewing this, because you see it a lot, especially on social media. And I think I think your generation primarily, y'all get a y'all get a bad rap for this, of maybe caring about those things a little mm -hmm. bit too much. But I would I would love to hear from your perspective, RG, maybe, maybe speaking to it about fashion or just maybe when was the last time or a recent time you felt like, man, I was actually being my authentic self and it mattered? When, when is it? Maybe you can help us understand your your vantage point from, from that perspective. Yeah, we were just talking about this, actually. My boy, um, Brian, he's a fashion designer out in Miami. And uh, we were just talking about how art isn't, like, one-dimensional, right? Like, an artist isn't just, like, the music he puts out, but he's also, like, the, the clothes he puts on, yeah, like, the, the art he presents, like, the brand. Like, we talk about branding and stuff, like, the design, video, everything. It's not, it's not one-dimensional. So I think, for me, I see it every time, like, a fan responds to, like, you know, one of my posts and, like, yo, I'm inspired by this. Or, like, whenever... Uh, you know, I, I bump into my boy Latif, who's um, head of, uh, well, he's the creator of Wisdom, um, this brand here in Atlanta. And, you know, he's just inspired by what I do. Like, it's not, it's not, there's no, like, it's, he's Christian, he's not Christian, whatever. It's like, no, nah, it's just dope. It's just dope art, dope um, content and stuff that we're creating. And I think, uh, yeah, I think that's where the reward is for me, like, being able to be myself and represent Christ in the sense that, like, isn't, uh, I don't have to deny who I am and who God created me to be. Yeah, I, I want to I wanna kind of follow that train a little bit, and then, Cray, I'd love to ask your perspective. So kind of what I hear you saying is the art form extends past the music. And I, that's what a lot of people maybe traditionally have gravitated toward the lyrics, the content of the music. And that's what's important. But what I hear you saying is, is, is there's more to that, and, and more as the as things develop, you know, concepts like branding are are becoming more and more important. Do you feel? How would you how would you respond? Or do you feel like it's legit? Is it something that you think about when people say, "Yo, a lot of these younger artists, it seems like they care more about that stuff than the gospel." Do you do you process that? Is that a, is that a legitimate thing to you? Is that a legitimate? Ar Rg's about to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a real question. I think I think um, I can't speak on people's personal walk, but I think the people I got around me we're all like adamant about growing and like we talk. We have constant conversations about faith and about our walk. And shoot, I was just confessing to one of my homies this morning, like, it's, I think, I think there's pockets. I can't speak for everybody, but I sure. think most of us, like, are genuine about this walk, and we want to, we want to grow in our faith, and we also want to, like, influence people to, like, pursue, pursue God. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's God. I, I kind of want to ping it back to you, Craig, from a, from an artistic perspective, because you, you were there when big T's and tattoos were more revolutionary, right? That was that was ooh, that was what got the reaction. But you're still actively participating in the culture. So when was the last time you felt like you could authentically be yourself or you needed to authentically be yourself personally as an artist or maybe for the sake of what you represent? Does that look like now? Yeah. <clears throat> That's an interesting question. I think 
you know, I've I've seen I've lived through so many eras of this thing, you know what I'm saying? And I, I essentially, you know, found myself through it all. So it was a season where I didn't even know who Lecrae was, but I I knew who God was, and I was just trying to represent Him. But I didn't fully know who I was, so I was getting a lot of my identity shaped and formed. And honestly, it's been within the last few years where I've become more comfortable, you know, with even understanding who I am. So it's crazy because the the music I was making, not the content per se when I first started, but just the the texture of it was really authentically me. It was the tall tees. It was it was just kind of hood, you know, for lack of a better word. But that was me being me from my formative years. But I think at the same time, I felt like I had to prove how much theology I knew. Mm. I had to prove how serious I was about the gospel. I had to prove that I was not one of them people who was just in it for the money or in it for the likes. Is there is there a time you could think what maybe maybe you could give us like a song or a moment where you were like, that's what, at that point, that's what I was, that's what was going through my head, was I felt like I had to prove. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I remember uh, working, so this is what's crazy. I did, uh, I did After the Music Stops, right? And I did Jesus Music, it resonated. It was something really special about it, right? But then, it was just like a lot of songs that were experimental. So it was all over the place. It wasn't fully me. And so I'm, I went to, I moved to Memphis. I was in the hood and the, and the kids was like, man, we don't really like a lot of your music except for Jesus music. You know what I'm saying? They just mm. couldn't resonate with it. It was mm. like, and I was like, dang, who am I making music for? You know, I'm making youth camp music and I'm not making music to reach the people that I actually can relate to. So that's what prompted me to make Rebel. So I'm making Rebel because I'm like, yo, I, I really need to make music for this environment. But then there were songs on Rebel, like The Bride, where I wanted to make sure that all the, the super theologians and the, you know, the evangelicals knew I was still serious. So let me go ahead and break down what the church is. And let me tell you something, like as, as much as people may like that song, that song was stressful for me to write. It was it's really a sermon, dog. Like I was sitting, I remember sitting on the People were stressing on the pen. It was stressful, bro. Cause that boy I'm was sitting sweating. There, I, I literally was studying for like three hours on wow. who the church is and what the church is so that I could write these lyrics out. And it was a sermon more than it was a song. And if that's what you do naturally, by all means do it. But I think that sometimes robs the art from its genuineness, its authenticity, because now it's no longer about the art, it's just you trying to get a message across. So, okay, that's, good, that's a, this is, I think we're getting to good territory for the conversation, and I, I wanna touch on that a little bit because I was looking on, so Kendrick Lamar, um, I think everyone is aware of what he's doing right now with the, with the crown and just with his album and things like that, and some folks are taking that as an opportunity to bring up this topic of, yo, y'all care more about the art than you do. Like if y'all look, if y'all, if y'all look at this and say that what he, what his music in general is valuable, yeah. that's a sign that y'all are, are um, making art and authenticity more, Trump. more important than like the, the gospel. God. Do y'all feel that that's a legitimate? that that's a legitimate claim or is there a way to approach that you think does it matter does it matter to you i'll be interested to hear y'all before y'all say i just want to say this like i still preach the gospel i share the gospel all the time with people i still write books do sermons but that doesn't mean that that's what my art has to be mm. used for it yeah, could uh, be, but it you're preaching right. Uh, Show Sh <laughs> Baraka said this a while back, after right after he left Reach, and some of the reasons why he felt like the music at the time felt like it was being hijacked for evangelical purposes, evangelizing purposes exclusively, and that music had more um, 
uh, it had more uh, impact. It had more ability to do more, to express more. And I thought, and I feel like, honestly, to your point, what Kendrick is doing, you know, there's some, I understand critique on both sides. I feel like at the end of the day, I, I, I choose to give him grace and not put, you know, so, so much of my energy on criticizing whatever he's doing. But I do look inwardly and say, um, you talked about RG uh, prioritizing aesthetic and art form. I think those are important. You know what I'm saying? I feel like as God's uh, children, we should reflect the dopest things that we can. And I also feel like art form should be something that we lean into. But there has to, when, you, when you really break down the, the bottom line of what makes a Christian artist or artist that's Christian, however you want to call it, what is the distinction? Mm. And then like, when, you, when you really break all that down, dope, fly, aesthetic, content, yada, 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 what is a, what's distinct about what we're doing mm. that points to something greater that maybe y'all can't see? And I think that has to be like the, 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 the bent for someone who's a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I also think like some people who say that there's no like content in the art that we're making like they're probably just not listening like <laughs> like if if you listen to No Church in a while like bro it's a it's a it's a deep project bro they're talking about like like fuse come up and and the way Cray paid the way for him in the, in the single and then like throughout the project they're like talking about like uh like real life things and I think it's just People just aren't listening, bro. Mm -hmm. Like we're we're talking about stuff. It's just it's just yeah. swaggy. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not didactic. It's not exactly this A B C D exactly. E F G. Art, is art, art is dynamic and it has it can express itself many different ways. Yeah. And I and I feel like the beauty in where Christian hip hop is now and in you know, our roster is that there's a spectrum of uh delivery. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, mm -hmm. Triple's delivery may be a little bit more explicit in how he communicates. Whereas Andy's or RG's maybe a little bit more artistic. Well, La Lecrae's may be more art testimonial. Where No Big Deals may be more comedic. Like a Aha's may be comedic and like challenging. I think all those expressions are dope as long as it's rooted in the intent of like I want to make sure I'm reflecting who God made me to be and not that's watering what I was it down. Gonna say. Yeah. And you gotta look at their personalities, yeah. bro. Like that's who they are. If we when we're on tour, if Trip and KB are together, they are going to be talking theology for five hours straight. And bro. I'm going to yeah. be asleep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I, they're teachers, bro. That's what they're being. So of bunch. course it's going to bleed out in the music. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah, I, I heard, I, I may have seen some video footage of, of, of some uh, in and out pranks and things <laughs> that you might've been involved in. So I think we can see Just a little bit of what him, that, him and biz. That's it. what that personality is. Is yeah. and I, I think it, if people want a three part sermon, like go to church, bro. Like, well, so, and, and so my, my, <laughs> okay, my pushback is if that is how you naturally communicate and create your art, then do it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Want a beautiful eulogy, what the other guy, like, love beautiful like, eulogy. Okay. Oh, actually, beautiful eulogy is hard, bro. Like, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I wish they gift. would, make, yeah, I wish yeah, they, it yeah. is. I wish they would make more music. Um, on a, on a, so there's this kind of this question that we've been rolling around. And it's inspired by, you know, Lecrae, you hit on it a bit. Most Def, when he opened his album, uh, Black on Both Sides, he said, yo, you know, people come up to me and they say, where's hip hop going? You know, and he said, well, I re reversed the question. And I said, well, where are you going? You know, hip hop is going wherever you going. If you smoked out, hip hop smoked out. If you feeling good and beautiful, hip hop is good and beautiful. And so with that same premise again, as it's 2022, I know for Reach, it's almost 20, soon we'll be celebrating 20 years of Reach That's Records crazy. alone. That's crazy. We talked about the first gospel or hip hop, gospel hip hop album being like 82. So that's 20 years of Reach Records. That's about 40 something years yeah. of Christian hip hop. With, with you all being participants, I wanna ask the question, where are you going if, if, if we, where where are you going, RG? If 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 you are this thing, if you are this movement, where are you going? Um, that's a deep question. I was thinking about something else. My fault, bro. <laughs> My fault. I'm off the coffee, bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Better that than there's other things. <laughs> there's, there's other things you could be. Nah, but um, yeah, I think. I think I'm heading where where we've been going. I think there's a trajectory, right? Like you look at where things have been, where it started, and where it's been going. Like it can't deviate too far from the trajectory. Um, I think what we got going on, though, like we're just heading towards 
towards creating the dopest art, creating the highest level, like, uh, music. And I feel like everybody just tapped into who they are and their, their crafts and their gifts and stuff. And I'm, I think for me, I just want to be intentional about um, being authentic and being transparent with who I am. And then, um, you know, letting God take, take, take it wherever it needs to go, you know? Mm. You tweeted one time, um, I'll never forget this, you tweeted that Christians, Christian art should be the best art. Mm-hmm. The best artist and the best. That comes to mind when I hear you say that that you're headed toward excellence. What does, what do you mean when you say that? When you think about it, like, art used to, like, the church used to drive art, right? Like, Michelangelo painted, like, the Sistine Chapel and stuff. And, like, like art used to come out of the church and then for some reason like the church started playing catch up with the world and stuff and it's like man like I think it's time for the church to reclaim like the creativity that God gave us you know um so that's kind of where I'm at like bro I I just think like the creator of the universe lives within us bro like we got no choice but to be creative so Mm -hmm. yeah and for the record I think you're doing a phenomenal job at at, uh, Whenever he does it, can I? He does it. <laughs> hey, you're going crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah, yo, yo, I, yeah. Had a, I actually had a question. This is what I was thinking about earlier. Yeah, drop if it. you were talking about um, having to prove yourself to like the evangelical mm-hmm. like people and stuff like that. What was it like? Did you feel like you had to prove yourself to like the mainstream side too? Oh yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. What was that's what, a great question. What yeah. was that like? Because I feel like you've been like balancing this like back and forth. Your whole career? Um, For a kid who didn't grow up with a father or any male figures who, like, affirmed him, I was always grasping for some male person to be like, you did it, you made it. And so at different seasons of my life, first it was like John Piper to be like, you're killing it. I was like, me? I'm killing it? You know what I'm saying? And then once the mainstream was like, you know, it was like Bun B, like, yo, man, I'm so proud of you. I'm like, Bun B's proud of me. You know what I'm saying? UGK, this is crazy. So you're thinking about all the people that, it's, it's, it's why it's why J. Cole wrote, wrote I Let Nas Down. Because you're, you're spending too much time in your mind thinking about all the people that are watching you, and you're no longer just creating from that, that authentic place that God has called. That's why I think God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. We value our thoughts too much. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just like, what are God's thoughts, and what, right. how should I be moving? So you know what I'm saying. Yeah. How does that? How does that drive like where you're headed now? Like knowing where you've been in those other spaces. Yeah, you. you want, once you've seen it all, like here's a problem. I think, and I think all, all youngsters do this. I did it. I feel like everybody does it. You are aiming to prove something. Like, you just got a chip on your shoulder. You're trying to prove something, right? Once you achieve it, you like, man, that was a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? That was vanity. Or you just get older and you like, that was so dumb. But when you're in the moment, you're in the moment. It's like, when you're in the eighth grade, them J's mean everything to you. It's not really going to matter when you get to 12th grade, but you're in the eighth grade right now, so you're like, nah, I don't well, do anything. What, what would you... That when you talk about achievements, what 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 was something? Because you talk about now being in this place of feeling like you don't have to. What yeah. was the achievement that made you feel like man, or and a recent achievement that made yeah. you feel like man? I was I was trying to prove something by having this and I got it. Yeah, I would say first thing is being signed to a major label. Like, uh oh. I just thought that was mm. gonna really be the thing that validated me and gave me that sense of belonging. Even know? as a label owner, though, right? That's a that's that's right. A, that's a super. That's, y'all, that's y'all what's crazy. Like, that's that's yeah. crazy. You, it's like yo, you got a bad chick at home and you want to be with this little something. Yeah. It's like, what are you thinking? You got a million dollars in your bank account, but you want this two dollar bill right here. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm. Because it it means so much in the moment, and I thought that like that some kind of way validated me that I'm walking through the same halls as Pharrell and J Cole and Lauren Hill. We were there at the same time, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He was there. We were there. Yeah, so, but but in the end of the day, it's like oh, they are looking at me like yo, you already killing it. Like where are you? You don't need us. You already. And I'm like, dang. 
you know what I'm saying? But in your brain, you always think the grass is greener. Yeah. And and once I got there, I was like, this is this is lame. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like no shade to any particular, but I just the major label system is like, oh, this ain't really it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I think what you said was dope about young people. I know I sound older, but like when you are younger, you just you have this chip on your shoulder, you're trying to prove something. Yeah. And I, I, I deal with creators all the time, writers, producers, artists. They're all trying to get either my affirmation or affirmation of us. And and I, I've tweeted this before. It's like, it's okay to have a little bit of petty aggression, a little bit of fight in you, fight in you. But if, if you're creating from a place of trying to prove people wrong, that's a dangerous pathway. Yeah. You, you got to just acknowledge that you're kind of already approved. And win, lose, or draw, you're good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just think trying to prove people wrong will... It's just gonna you're gonna fall flat on your face. That's a that's a great stance, and I think hearing y'all two talk about this, I want to ask this question from a you know the three of us. It's no surprise we work together. We're executives by title. We make a lot of decisions day to day that influence a lot of what it is that we see and and what we're doing. So I want to pose the question from an executive standpoint. Where where are you headed? Mm. Where are you headed? Mm. By by what stripe or what measure okay, are so you making these decisions? I would say even shout out to all the artists that we work with. Shout out to RG Lecrae who kind of wears both hats. Shout out to you too, man. Always being a great teammate and how we go in the trenches with me. I feel like right now, intention where I'm at as an executive is um, Tyler the Creator said this in a in a um, interview I think three years ago. He kept saying the word care. He said the word care about 30 times. And he was like, because they care. And I think that's what's driving a lot of my decision making mm. more right now. What do, what do we care about? Do we care about the artist? Do we care about the brand? Do we care? I think win, lose, or draw, you want to make money. You want to make impact. Everybody wants to have influence. We all want those things. But do I care about RG and what he stands for? And these decisions, even I can even talk about stuff. I'm texting him yesterday. It's like I Wait. care about how he would feel about these decisions. Yeah. So I'm going to text him and let him know, hey, this is what we're thinking, and I, I want to, I, I care to know how you feel. You know what, what, if, what if? What, so it's interesting because you're you're an executive, and you're talking about care, and I think a lot of people would probably say that's cat. Like those two things are not. That's the Christian. I was about to say that's not normal, bro. Like for an executive to care about what the artists think, like, bro, come on. What difference Props to y'all? Yeah, what difference does that? What difference in the context of all of this? What difference does that make? Context of what? When has it made a difference? More, more recently, when has it made a difference? When the artists get on our case about how we ain't dealing their stuff right, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, which is <laughs> happens every uh, every uh, every other week. <laughs> Not just kidding. <laughs> Not kidding. Um, I think it just it every makes other day. every other day. Look, I, <laughs> we've we've all been in places. You know, we've been in rooms. I mean, I look back. The fifteen year me, fifteen year old version of me is smiling. You've been, you've, you've walked through rooms, and you, and you, I have friends in the industry at certain labels. You see how they move, and you see certain decisions, and you're like, and I'm sometimes like, sometimes I'm like, man, I probably wouldn't even survive in those spaces, not because I don't know how to move, but I, I just sometimes I care too much to put my signature on that play. I'm like, nah, I don't want to move like that. If that's what it takes to be successful, and to have influence and to break an artist, I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of that. That don't, that don't sit right with me. So, I think it's just about caring about what the artist is thinking about, but also not being shy about what the labels think about because this is a this is a partnership, you know what I mean? So we have to both win together. I love the the Warriors example, right? It's no shade on the Brooklyn Nets, but it just teamwork works. When you put talented people in a room and they buy in with buy in with each other and they are dope. Like come on, Clay Thompson can put up 30 any night, so can Steph Curry. When we are doing our best, working together and caring about what we all think, Success happens, but when you have the Brooklyn Nets or artists who are just all about themselves, or labels who are all about themselves, you're gonna have the Nets. You're gonna have the, all the talent in the world, but no outcome and no and no results. So, oh man, yeah. Can I drop the mic? If you yeah, if you want to, these ain't our mics. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah Cray, as as an exec, because there's you wear so many hats, and we talk about this all the time. Father, yeah. label owner, yeah, artist. Where you with, with all them hats on or with all them hats in your bag, from that perspective, where are you headed? 
it's so funny because it's all the same right now. That's what I don't think my kids and my artists probably don't even realize it. Like, all I'm really focusing on is them. So even when I'm trying to get it popping, I'm trying to get it popping for their sake. I don't, I'm, I got, I got multiple Grammys. I got Billboard. I got Billboard number ones, and not just in certain genres. 200, Billboard top 200, number one album, Beat Maroon 5. I don't need anything else. I don't need to scratch another itch. All I want to be is Lil Wayne for Drake and Nicki. Oof. You know what I'm saying? That's all. And that's for my kids and for my artists. Like, I'm just trying to, like, I be, I sent him a, a text the other day, like, with Me Memphis Bleak was like, Jay-Z hit him like, yo, I, I do all this for your sake. I'm trying to help your life be better. I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I be just trying to give people layups. And I feel like even as a, as a, as a dad, it's like sometimes your, your kids don't get it. Like, they like, I'm good. I'm like, yo, I woke you up early so you can get this workout on because you want to run D1. Mm. I'm good. I'm tired. Yo. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's even that's similarly with the artists, it's care. It's like, yo, I'm trying to, I'm, I want to put you on this song because I think it's going to do well. Do you want to do the verse? Because I got eyeballs on me. Nah, I'm straight. All right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's um I remember we were at uh I think it was BT weekend a couple years ago. Uh I remember you and I we kind of caught a moment outside of the the noise and you came up to me and you was like, "Yo, um man, I I get to run around. I I I jump on I jump up and down on stages and and all those types of things like that and you said so that you can make a living with your brain." Facts. And I never, Man. I, I never, wow. I never thought about that. Um, and I, I, in that moment, I was like, "Yo, I really appreciate that." Yeah. Um, you know, personally and symbolically, of of what that means. And I think RG, you know, we had this conversation. I, I primarily, if I haven't said it to you, I say it to you now. Um, can I? And I know I say it to few a lot because uh, I see him around a little bit. Um, having kids now, you know, I came been doing this almost 10 years now, having kids now, you really start to see the world from a different perspective. And you say, man, I'm not as, personally, I'm not as quick with it like I used to be or whatever was fly to me. <laughs> it's not necessarily, y'all are a little, y'all are more up on that stuff. And my kids are all, I got a two year old, all right, I see when I put the, when I put the records on at home, it's like, yo, play that. Like, mm -hmm. like, like my son knows y'all's names, you know what I'm saying? It's the car rides, it's just all y'all's music. And it starts to hit me like, man, it would be really, really dope for this to be around when he gets older. My Ooh. son, if my son says, comes to me one day and say, hey, I want to do what R, with what RG does. I want to do what Few does. To me, I'm like, man, the next 16 years of my life, that's not the only thing I'm going for, but that would be a, that's a really significant, that would be a really significant thing mm -hmm. to, to be able to accomplish for him to be able to say that and for there to be a roadmap for yeah. him, for all of these questions that we're asking, all these things, that it's that much more figured out that, yeah. you know, my son could, could walk in them shoes right there. Like, yo, I wear the babe joints like this and I care about my branding because of RG and, you know, I, 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 I try to think about people like that because I remember the, the Lecrae thing. And so to maybe button up the question with that, all of these desires and, and things and where we would say we're headed, what is it going to take? <laughs> it's going to take RG putting out his album. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's going to take New Hollywood, drop. <laughs> Are you out? <laughs> I'm out. Nah. He's <laughs> ah, it's on me. <laughs> nah, I, I, I think the future's in good hands. Like, just being honest, like, and it ain't just with reach, just in general. Like, I love what's happening. I love seeing like the, um, uh, uh, you know, the movements happening everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So I think the future's in good hands. I think, honestly, for me, it's gonna take intentionality on like fusing together because we're stronger together than we are apart. Yeah. Who who's stronger together? The, the 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 Christian hip hop artists out there. 
like the Holy Smoke Festival is a great situation where people can come together and be like, all right, we can move as a unit, collaborate as a unit. Because if one one wins, we all start winning. That's where I say I dropped the ball personally is I started winning and I was like a little too particular about who I brought with me because I was too worried about everybody thinking we was lame. So I was only like, nah, you got to be really dope if I'm going to bring you with me. Andy, you can come, prop again. You know what I'm saying? And it's, instead yeah. of just being like, yo, I'm a Christian hip-hop artist. We out here. You know what I'm saying? I would have did that differently. That's, that's interesting. What was your, specifically because you named them names, like what, what was your metric for, what was the litmus for who you... At that point in time, you had to have impressive rhymes because the culture cared about lyricism when I was coming up. So if I didn't, if your bar game was not impressive to the gatekeepers in hip hop, I probably wasn't gonna point at you. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was like, nah. If real talk, I was like, you ain't finna embarrass us out here. I think, I think <laughs> hey, I think it was necessary though. Yeah. Like, I know, you, I know you probably think like you dropped the ball, but I, I feel like you set a standard for what like dope music looked like and sounded like, so. I think, it. yeah, I think it, yeah. I don't think you dropped the ball. Thank the quality standard was helpful. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> it's helpful. necessary now. It's, it's just, it's, as long as it's done, like, it's right. like, when it's, when it's like, a, it's like family business. Like, yo, hey, my man, hey, look, you know, hey, you, your bar got to, you got to kind of have that. And we've, yeah. trust, trust me, people, artists have come to me before and be like, yo, Ace, uh, that, those plays y'all did, that wasn't it. Yeah. And <laughs> you're like, dang, I took that That's on the real. I, I just yeah. think I would have definitely been more, like, owned I didn't know, it was, nobody had ever been where I've been before, so I didn't know how yeah. to handle it. Yeah. But I would have owned it more. Like, now we own it and it's our thing. It's yeah. like, yeah, holy smoke. It's dope, too, because you see it, like, last month I went to all three festivals. It was, like, Holy Smoke, Sierra Vos, and then Glochella. So it was, like, Atlanta, Houston, and in the Bay. And it was, like, every every festival was the same vibe. Like, everybody's, like, on the same energy. Everybody's, like... Mm. Focus on the mission. Everybody's united. There's no egos. There's mm. no um, pride. So I think, um, to your point, like I think where we're at is is it. We just it's just yeah. a matter of like moving forward and continuing what already started. That's dope. That's dope. Well, I think that's a good place to really rest the conversation. I mean, if I was an outsider looking in, I guess I would have to walk away from this. Maybe saying, "Yo." Christian hip hop is going good places. For sure. Christian hip hop is 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 striving for excellence and it's it's getting there. It's achieving that. Yeah, I would agree. Is it mainstream ain't gotta pay attention to us for us to be doing great things? Yeah. One thousand. No doubt. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. Respect. New Hollywood coming soon. <laughs> go get that new Hollywood. CC4 coming soon. CC4 coming soon. <laughs> the Jam December 22. Our, our, our Craig gets on you for new Hollywood. Just, just say CC4. Uh, yeah, Jam, jam that, jam that Summer 22 playlist. Nah, that was, that was dope. That was dope. Man, I'm tweaking off this coffee, bro. My man said on camera. I'm